Thank you. So uh, let's go straight to the, the question. You know, we, we've been talking about this in our shows for much of this year, low volatility. Where is it going to be going the next couple months or so? But yet you're seeing quite a bit of trading volume. What's driving that right now? You know, what's driving it is there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty going on in the geopolitical uh, regime. And CME Group is very proud of having the widest array of diverse asset classes to respond to that uncertainty, our interest rates, our energies, our commodities, our metals, our foreign currencies, providing the tools that our clients need to manage these risks during uncertain times. Uh, do you think it, we're going to see any kind of pickup in volatility in the next coming months? You know, it's hard to project what volatility is going to occur over the next several months, but what I can say is the activities, particularly on the international scale, have been tremendous for us, and that's an area of focus of growth for our company. Okay. You know, you're in Asia, uh, of course. Uh, what are your ambitions uh, for CME Group outside of the U.S.? I mean, you've closed your European exchange and said mm -hmm. you told people to use more of the electronic platform. What about in Asia? We're profoundly proud this week, actually. I'm here to celebrate our 30th anniversary here in Asia. So uh, after this visit today, I'll be in Tokyo uh, celebrating our first office in Asia. Asia represents uh, a tremendous area of growth for us. International, we're seeing uh, close to 3.5 million contracts now of our total 16 million coming out of international efforts. Uh, Asia represents, on average, close to 700,000 of those contracts. So we're, we're deeply proud of it. We have over 300 people located in quadrants throughout Asia so that we're able to, to meet the client demand. Yeah. Where, where are you seeing the most demand right now? And what are you doing in fairing in terms of driving or getting that demand in this part of the world? And how do you kind of beat out you know, the rivals out there as well? You know, we're really proud of energy and the performance that, that we've been seeing the past year and a half or so, particularly in our WTI contract. Uh, that contract has been seeing double-digit growth, and uh, now that we're exporting uh, crude oil um, globally, that's been a, a tremendous growth arena for us, particularly out of China um, and uh, Hong Kong, South Korea. Um, all the quadrants of Asia are really turning towards our uh, WTI contract. Interest rates as well as performing tr tremendously well in the region, as well as our foreign currencies and metals. Uh, Brian, I want to ask you a little bit about Bitcoin because that's such a hot topic in Asia, but also hot here as well. You know, you started this Bitcoin index, but you haven't uh, you haven't started any derivative derivative products related to that. Uh, when are we going to see Bitcoin futures at the CME Group? That's a great question. Uh, I really feel that Bitcoin is very nascent right now. Um, you've, you've indicated that we started an index that has uh, pr created more transparency from a pricing perspective. However, we have a tendency to be shifting our focus towards digitization itself and looking at the technologies associated with it and how it might uh, further complement our client needs. What does that mean exactly, Brian? You know, I really don't see us going forward with a futures contract in the very near future. Um, okay. However, the, the straight through processing and, and capabilities associated with digitization technologies is an area of interest for us. Uh, Brian, I want to ask you also about MIFID, right, which is, uh, you know, everyone's gearing up for this, uh, you know, in Europe, but also here. How might that affect your business? You know, the U.S. has uh, had a, a long uh, history of, of being highly uh, regulated in terms of an industry itself uh, for CME Group. And we've gone through uh, the experiences of Dodd-Frank. And, and from those experiences, we've been able to develop products and services that help uh, the clients adjust to uh, those re regulations. With respect to, to MIFID, you're seeing now the Europeans going through that transition theirself, and it's really incumbent upon us to be closely connected to our clients, being a global organization, and helping them understand what may be changing on that horizon. But we definitely have certainty within the U.S. in terms of our regulatory regime, and we're just going to continue building upon uh, that product base. Is there any impact from Brexit, of course? I mean, this long... You know, these negotiations are just kicking off here once again this week. It doesn't seem like we're getting a whole lot of clarity on whether it's going to be a soft Brexit, hard Brexit. Does it matter, CME Group? You know, it just continues to create uncertainty. And with uncertainty, there's risks associated with it. So we just continue to rely on building liquidity during the international time zones to make sure that as news comes out, 
markets and market participants are able to adapt and go to a market and be able to manage their risk. Do you see this kind of dragging on for, for two years? Is, is it going to come out favorably, at least for the UK, in any way, do you think? Or? Who's to tell? Yeah. I mean, it, it, the news, you know, is changing by the day on, on that topic. And so, you know, at the end of the day, again, our focus is just making sure that those markets are vibrant and liquid in response to any news that may come out. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about commercializing market data. That's been a kind of a key focus in a lot of exchanges in the last couple of years or so. Uh, what's CME doing in, to grow in that space right now? Market data represents a, a significant business line for us. Um, we have traditionally focused on the core data distribution. Uh, this past year, we've really been turning our focus on the development of derived products. Derived products is really utilizing pricing information to develop uh, products that are not necessarily derivative space, but are reliant on taking price feeds from us. So you'll see more on the horizon in terms of derived data. Um, and also data mining of our products. Would you so consider we see an area of growth? Would you, yeah, area of growth would that include acquisitions then? You know, really our focus is on what we have today with our core. Um, and there's definitely value to that IP that um, I'm challenging our team to further develop and cultivate from a revenue perspective.